kind of stuck here. The cops won't bother me. Hey, squids. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about riding scooters as opposed to motorcycles. I only recently started riding scooters and I've gotten a boatload of scooters. I've gotten like a couple of Honda Ruckuses, a Honda Elite, and the only bike I've kept is this Yamaha C3. Now the C3 is incredible. I bought it very inexpensive because this is one thing that scooter riders or scooters happen in the United States is that their resale is extremely bad and you can pick one of these up for less than a thousand dollars if you're if you're looking around. I recommend looking for scooters off season because people just want to get rid of them. But there are some really big advantages to riding a scooter and a 50 is a really good size of a scooter. You can get a 110 like I had a Honda Elite and that was a perfect scooter. But the problem with the 110s or over 50 cc scooters is that you need the license in in Maryland where I'm at and in Virginia and all of these places you do need a license but for a scooter a 50 you need just a driver's license and that's pretty much it they're very easy to register and you don't even get a license plate you basically go to the motor vehicles and you register it you don't even need an inspection so they're very easy to get on and just ride this particular scooter is a 50, it's a Yamaha C3, it's fuel injected so it starts right up. So in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the advantages of riding scooters as opposed to motorcycles. One of the things is you get amazing gas mileage. On this thing I'm getting over 110 miles per gallon and it is just so fuel efficient. This particular one is fuel injected so that means it's pretty rare to get but also it starts right up in the winter. You can just ride it all the time and for $2 of uh, gas, you can fill up the whole gas tank and go for a week. Another great advantage of scooters like this is that they offer you much more protection. And oftentimes with a windscreen, this thing feels like you're behind this bubble of, of motorcycle because all the wind goes around you it's also very slow, so it's not like you're getting like bombarded with rain or from the wind. They're very great for carrying things. So usually on scooters you have storage underneath the, the seat and you can put your groceries, you can put your helmet. They make commuting much easier on one of these than on a motorcycle. When it comes to commuting, riding one of these is very cheap. You don't spend a lot of money on gas and if you live in a state where they let you lane split or not lane split, you can go in between cars really easily on this. And because they're so cute looking, generally people tend to look away and kind of let you do whatever you want. Even hopping on the shoulder or sometimes even on the sidewalk, people let you do because they think of it as a cute mode of transportation and not this douchey aggressive motorcycle mode of transportation. In DC, where I live, I can park this on the sidewalk or a bike rack and not get a ticket. Now, if I was to do that on a motorcycle, I would get a ticket absolutely 100% like every, every time. But this, I can take it to museums downtown, the National Gallery, park on the sidewalk, park on a bicycle rack and not be given a ticket. Mainly because it's cute, it looks so small and people don't really generally worry about scooters in a sidewalk. If you have a big motorcycle like a V-Strom or GSXR, parking on the sidewalk is gonna guarantee you a ticket. Riding a scooter is pretty slow, especially a 50, but that's one of the advantages as well. When I'm on my motorcycle, I have to get at least 200 miles in to call it a ride. On this thing, 100 miles feels like I've done 800 miles on a motorcycle. So I can have adventures nearby my house and still feel like I'm put in lots of energy into riding. And it's kind of like a macro versus micro sort of thing. Riding this thing around my neighborhood, I've been able to find places I've never even seen because I would never think about going there on my motorcycle because what's the point? But this thing, you just go into like little alleys and side roads and it feels like an adventure. They're very easy to ride. 
There's a reason why they always rent these in islands and people promptly crash, is that these things are absolutely easy to ride. You have a rear brake here, a front brake here, and on the right you have a throttle. And that's pretty much it. And if you can ride the bicycle, you can ride a scooter. It's so simple. And people are not as intimidated by a scooter than they are with the motorcycle. The motorcycle, like you look at it, it's like, man, I really need to learn how to ride. But this thing, it's like feels so natural to just get on it and ride because it's simple. You just twist and go and that's it. And that's the beauty of it. It's like, it's not intimidating by people who ride it and the people who look at other people riding it is not intimidating. People see this as a cute mode of transportation. Another advantage is that it's very cheap to insure. For less than $100, you could be riding this completely insured for an entire year. And because it's so slow, insurance companies know that you're not going to be riding it far. And it's just a good backup vehicle if you ride a motorcycle. Probably not going to put tons of miles on these bikes. At 50, you really can't put a lot of miles on it anyway. You know, it's a tiny little engine. But if you do need an engine or you need to work on it, these engines are very cheap to get, they're very cheap to rebuild, and they're very easy to work on. There's nothing complex about these little engines. Another thing that's an advantage to a scooter is that they're very easy to pick up and to put in storage. You can have just a little tiny space. And if you have a, a car, for example, or even a minivan, you can fit one of these inside. You don't need a large pickup truck to move it around. So if you're like retired or you want to go on vacation but you want to take your scooter, you could get a side carrier, put it in your car, because these don't weigh very much at all. It's less than 200 pounds. You could put it in the back of your RV and go on vacation. You can put it inside a Honda Element, the Toyota RAV4, a Toyota Sienna. These all fit in there. They're so tiny. These 50s are extremely handy as a second mode of transportation, especially if your first mode of transportation is guzzling gas like crazy. You see a lot of these in the back of, of the RVs because they're just really nice and you can just very easy to live with. Oftentimes these bikes have a kickstart. This one's got a kickstart. Generally 50cc scooters have a backup kickstart along with the electronic kickstart or electronic start. So the kickstart, it's a good backup. You shouldn't use it all the time because you could wear out the me mechanism for the kickstarter, but these have electronic uh, push start, so you can, it's a very convenient way of starting the bike. It's not like an old Vespa that you have to really work on to start. And of course, if you get a Japanese scooter, they're extremely reliable. I do caution you guys to getting a Chinese scooter as opposed to a Japanese bike. I see a lot of people who buy Chinese scooters and I've had a couple of friends with Chinese scooters. They're not good bikes at all, not yet. Anyway, there are some better Chinese scooters that are coming to the United States, but if you want a reliable bike that you don't have to keep working on, a Japanese scooter is what you want to get. I would also avoid Vespas because even though they are a little bit more reliable, you still have to work on them a little bit more. These are just like, you change the oil. They're very simple to make. Maintenance. Maintenance on this is very simple. All you have to do is change the transmission oil and the engine oil. And that's pretty much all you have to do. It's, and it doesn't use up a lot, a lot of oil either. So you can keep riding this thing over and over. It'll give you tons of years of life if you treat it well. You can fill up your gas tank with like change. <laughs> I've never had to fill up my motorcycle with change. It would require at least $10. But this thing will fill up with just two, $2 of gas. And sometimes I have to go back into the shop and get change because it didn't fill, use up the entire $2. I haven't had the same problem on a motorcycle. Now these things are probably not very comfortable for riding cross country, but man, if you need reliable, cheap transportation, that's cute that you can get away with a lot more stuff. A scooter is the way to go. Well guys, thanks for watching this video. I appreciate it. That's the advantages to riding a scooter. And if you want reliable, cheap transportation that's fun and you can store it really easy, 
a scooter is what you want to get.